Welcome to the scurrychurchofchrist.org. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, my people are destroyed uh, for lack of knowledge. Please don't let this happen to you. Feel free to contact us at scurrychurchofchrist.org uh, where you can visit us and any Bible question that you may have, we will do our best to answer. We are so glad you decided to visit us. We'll turn to Isaiah chapter 39. Isaiah chapter 39. Isaiah was, a, of course, a, one of the great prophets of God. And he had a difficult task, but a wonderful task. And through Isaiah, we see how great God is. He has a different type of leadership. Uh, he's for the people. The way he does things, he shows great love and sacrifice to his enemies. He does things to try to get them to come to him, to return to him. Uh, God is a great God. In Israel, he blessed tremendously, and uh, as time went on, they forgot. And so uh, God was forbearing and was holding back his judgment. And notice his heart trying to convince them to return. Uh, they were very prosperous because of him. He blessed them. He took them out of Egypt when they were nothing. They were terrible. They had nothing, and he blessed them tremendously. They became a great nation. But they followed other gods. Uh, they were deceived. And, uh, instead of walking by faith, they walked by sight. And they lost touch of reality. And so notice what he says in chapter 39, if you have your Bibles, in verse 6. Behold, the days are coming when all that is in your house and all that your fathers have laid up in store to this day will be carried to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord. And, and some of your sons and who will issue from you, whom you will beget, will be taken away and they will become officials in the palace of the king of Babylon. And so this is during the time of Hezekiah. Notice the king Hezekiah said to Isaiah in verse 8, The word of the Lord, which you have spoken, is good. For he thought, for there will be peace and truth in my days. And so as you get into this, you see that punishment is coming, and that did happen. Now God, just his justice must be served. But notice how mercy is shown and grace is shown and long-suffering is shown, forbearance is shown. and uh, He's trying to convince them, but they just would not listen. But he's going to do something. Look at chapter 40, verse 1. He's going to do something. Now remember that they're going to lose everything. And the fact that they, God is saying, you're going to lose all this shows me that he gave it to them. He's, I'm taking it back. You see, it's mine. You didn't utilize it for the purpose I gave it to you for. I continue to come to you through my prophets, etc., and I gave you warnings to different type of destructions. And so now you're going into captivity for 70 years. And there's nothing they could do about it. That's the final judgment. There's nothing they could do. It's going to happen, and it happened. But notice what he says in chapter 4. He, he's giving them something to think about. In chapter 40, verse 1, Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak kindly to Jerusalem. Notice that. Now, if we get into, it's like in, in, in Isaiah 55, or rather 57, verse 5, 
they were sacrificing their children in the fire, serving the God of Molech, and that has something to do with Baal also. But they were sacrificing, they were sacrificing their children in the fire I mean, just to a false god. They were doing some terrible things. They totally put God behind their back. They totally had disregard for him. And their worship services, even though they sacrificed and did those things and they did more than what was expected, the heart was far from him. They were polluted. They mistreated one another. They were unjust. But notice what he says here. Comfort, oh comfort, my people. See that? That's the God he is. Says your God. Speak kindly to Jerusalem. See that? Even though they did all these things and they're going into captivity, he still wants their soul. He's speak kindly to Jerusalem and call out to her that her warfare has ended and her iniquity has been removed. I, this is what, ha, he, 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 it's like, this is the God we serve. That she has received the Lord's hand double for her sins. Now, they sin so much, but I, I'm inclined to believe that entails that there's going to be enough grace to cover what you've done. But I want you to see here that how God is towards the people who continually sin against him. When sometimes we have the attitude where we will turn our backs and have nothing to do with the person or persons or whatever. And, and they haven't done as much as what these people did to God. And God is saying, speak kindly to Jerusalem, call out to her, and her warfare has ended. He's going to do this. Just like I'm going to send Babylon, I'm going to do this. Now, I want you to see his heart because just like they went into captivity for 70 years because of their sins, he could have left them there. But he's saying, no. Speak kindly to Jerusalem and call out to her. And her, her warfare has ended. That iniquity has been removed. And she has received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Uh, there's enough grace. There's enough grace. Uh, and I want you to turn to Romans chapter 5. And, and, I, and, I, and I don't want to dwell there, but I believe this is the point here. Romans chapter 5. Let me get there. Romans chapter 5 and verse 20. Romans chapter 5 verse 20. And you see, there's going to, there's deliverance. There's enough grace. And look at verse 20. He says, for the law came so that the transgressions would increase. Law of Moses came so that you would have full understanding of the sins and the consequences of sin. But where sin increased, and so when you see that sin increase, when you see you have the knowledge of sin and you find yourself in that position, a terrible predicament, He's saying, there's enough grace. See, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. But you, you see that, and so that she has received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. She's going to receive what she needs to be forgiven. I love that. But notice this, and so God is going to do something. He's a God of comfort. Now, it's very interesting in the book of Lamentations when it happened. Jeremiah is lamenting over what he sees, the destruction of Jerusalem. And in that book, there you see there's no comfort. There's no comfort. There's no comfort. There's no comfort. But here, he's, you see comfort. It's like there, there's, this is what you put yourself into. You disobeyed me, and it's coming, but I'm still with you. Your sins are still forgiven. I'm going to, there's going to be a restoration by my grace. You have, I have a, enough grace to, to forgive you when you repent. Not push you to the side. I know what you've done, but I'm still calling you back. I'm speaking kindly to you. Notice in verse 3, a voice is calling, clear the way for the Lord in the wilderness Make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. It's like, let, watch this. Let every valley be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. Let the rough grounds become plain and rugged terrain a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed all, and all flesh will see 
it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So clear the way. Notice what he said. I want you to understand that if you were these people, the Israelites, and you were going into captivity, and they went into captivity. Remember, God's word does not return him empty. And so I want you to think, if you're reading this, and then you know this is going to happen, but then you see, comfort, comfort, my people, says your God, and speak kindly to Jerusalem. And so you see a, a time of restoration. That would keep me going during a time of trouble. See, that it's like I'm thinking about a future. It's like I, I put myself, there's consequences of sin. So because, because there are consequences, you, you, you sin and the, the, the results of that is whatever it is, but you know you put yourself there, but because you see this, you can have hope while you're there, looking for the future. And so God has given them hope, but, but I want you to see that he did not leave them Alone, even it's like when he sent them to captivity, it was to purify them, to make them better, so they would be my people, and I could be their God. And that's why I said, and so you know, a voice is calling, clear the way for the Lord in the wilderness, make smooth in a desert a highway for our God. It's almost like you know, back in the day when the kings would come, clear the way, they will make a huge announcement. Clear the way, get ready, Make, get the path ready, do this because the king is coming. But this is a different king. This king is coming, it's not all about him. He's coming to help. See, he's coming to do something for us, to make things better. Notice verse 5, Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all flesh will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, call out, and he answers. Watch this. Then he answered, what shall I call you? All flesh is grass, and all its loving kind, all its lovingness is like a flower of the field. Watch this. The grass withers, the flowers fade, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Watch this. Show the people are grass. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord stands forever. In other words, you better pay attention. Because things are temporary. See, all things are temporary. And you notice what put them there. They, were, they, were, they allowed themselves to be taken away by things that were temporary. The false gods and the, the lifestyle that they gave credit to the false gods, the things they were doing, and, and the prosperity, it's all temporary. And so in other words, herald, let it be known, the king is coming. You're going to receive comfort. So it's like, prepare, get ready, because I'm coming. Here he comes. But what, but see, what causes, what will cause a person not to be ready? What will influence a person not to take heed to what he's saying? What causes a person to still continue in the things that they were doing. Well, it, it's this, because what happens, we get focused on the temporary things. That's what happens. And see, and, and what causes a person to lack faithfulness? See, it's the temporary things. There's something that causes, that draws our attention away from God. And God is saying, make ready. Get ready because it's, I'm going to give you some comfort, so get yourself together. But, and so there were some who did that. There were some who did not do that. And so what he does, he sent them into captivity by the hands of the Babylonian Empire so they can be ready. But you notice this. When he took them into captivity, they lost everything. Man, we just read that in chapter 39. The day In verse 6, behold, the days are coming when all that is in your house, and all that your fathers have laid up in store to this day will be carried to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord. So they have, notice this, they have nothing to hold them back now. See what God is doing? Because of your prosperity, you have changed. You disregard my law. So I'm taking it away. He took away the, all their prosperity. Now notice that he says, comfort, comfort, comfort. 
says your God, speak kindly to Jerusalem. See that? Because now, now it's like, then it, that's what, then when he goes back to chapter six, uh, rather verse six of chapter 40, he says, a voice says, call out. And he answers, what shall I call out? All flesh is grass. All and all its loveliness is like flower of the field. The grass withers and the flower fades. In verse eight, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of the Lord stands forever. The only, the only permanent thing is God. And that's what he's saying. Don't go back. Listen, there's going to be a time when you're going to receive great comfort. But you need to take heed. Because don't, don't let, those, don't let those, those, those things, those temporary things fool you. I am the only dependable. God, I am the faithful God. And that, you know, and we said this morning in Bible class, when you see the Lord of hosts, he's showing that he is a mighty God and he, he has the ability to do what he said he's going to do. And everything he's saying here, you know what happened. He's that, the God of strength. He's the only one that we can depend on. The temporary things we cannot depend on. They give temporary satisfaction. We say, well, wait a minute. I, 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 it's, it's, well, I, I, I've, had, I've had satisfaction. And so, they're, they're, oh, well, I've been living like this for, for 20 some years. I've been doing this all my life. And so it's still temporary. Well, you don't think so? Let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. Notice. Chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Watch this. So, you know, I, 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 I've, I'm okay. But you say it's temporary, but I, I, I've been, I've, I've had all these things for many, many, many years. It's still temporary. You can't count on it. Notice 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Notice what he says in verse 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. See? For a momentary, light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond, beyond all comparison. While we look at, no, notice this, while we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Compared to eternal, eternity, it's all temporary. It's all temporal. Everything that, and see, people were deceived because we're letting these, these things Cause us not to be ready. Not to focus on God. Not to study God's word. Not to make him the number one in our lives. What is it? It's the temporary things. And there are people who worship today. There, there are people, and I, I, I'm sure there is. I'm going to, you know, I'm not. But there, I'm sure there are people who are not worship today because they have other things to do. Maybe this is the day I cut my grass or I clean my yard or my garage or I wash my car or this is the day when I go to Dailies. This is the day where I do this. This is the day. And, and I'm not saying it's okay if you go to Dailies as long as you worship God. Don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm talking, talking about those who reject God. I think I better get that straight because some of y'all go to the Dailies. <laughs> but I want to the reality is that there are things that cause us not to be faithful. God is saying Get ready. Look at Matthew chapter 3. Uh, uh, notice in, in chapter 40, Isaiah, verse 3, he says, The voice is calling, clear the way for the Lord in the wilderness, make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. That's, that's John the Baptist. But notice, let's go to Matthew chapter 3. Notice how he wants them to be ready. Matthew chapter 3, notice this. 
In Matthew chapter 3, verse 1. Here we go. Now in those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness through Judea, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is the one referred to by Isaiah the prophet when he said, The voice is one crying in wilderness, Make ready the way of the Lord, make his path straight. See? How do I get my... He said, repent and believe the gospel. That's how... Get your heart ready. Get your heart ready. Or is your heart ready? Is our heart ready to serve God? Is it ready? Why not? If I'm accountable to God, that means I should be preparing myself to be ready. Now watch this. And people do that, especially our younger generation. It's like they, like they feel like they have time. No, you don't. If you're accountable to God and your soul, you're not saved, then you're, you're in trouble. You're not ready. God had did, he done all this for his people, for us. And he just saying, be ready. Be ready. See what I've done for you and, and how I did this. And even though you treated me this way, Israel, I still develop a plan so you could be with me for eternity. I'm still going to allow you to get away from the Babylonian captivity. I'm still going to punish them. And he did that through Medo Persia so you can be free from them. So you need to be ready. Now, what if I'm not ready? Now, I want to show you something. What if I'm not ready? I want you to go to 1 John chapter 2. Look at verse 27. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 27. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 27. Notice this. He said, watch this, I like this. As for you, the anointing which you received from him abides in you. And you have no need for anyone to teach you, but... But as his anointing teaches you about all things and is true and is not a lie, it's not a lie, it's true. The word of God is true. And just as it has taught you, you abide in him. So stay with it. So when you stay with him, you're ready. That's how I stay ready. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go in another direction. I'm not, I'm not going to go to the left, to the right. I'm just going to stay focused on God's word. And that's why he says here in verse 24, as for you, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. So notice when I do that, when I make myself ready, watch this. Now watch this. First, verse 28. Now little children, abide in him. But watch. How do I abide in him? Well, this is how I abide in him. He said in verse 24. As for you, let that a body which you heard from the beginning. See? And look at verse 27. As for you, the anointing which you received from him abides in you. That's the gospel. And you have no need for anyone to teach you, teach you, but his anointing teaches you about all things. It is true and it is not a lie, just as it has taught you abide in him. And that was the Jews' problem, the Israelites' problem. They were not abiding in the commandments of God. And so he did what he did to bring them back so they could be obedient to him, so they could be with him. He wants a relationship with us. But notice when I, if I don't, and what if I don't? And, and it's amazing that everything God did for us, people think we're doing him a favor if I worship or if I give my soul over to him. No, he did us a great favor, a tremendous favor. There's not a, I can't even find a word to describe it. And notice what he says here. Notice this. I want you to think about yourself. Think about your mind. Look at your flesh. If you, and I mean, I don't mean that literally because I have to go and do all of this. But I want you to, that that I want you to think that that the, the soul returns to God who gave it. The spirit returns to God who gave it. Now watch. And so we know Luke chapter sixteen when the rich man and Lazarus, the rich man, they both. Went on, that, uh, as we know, death means separation when your spirit separates from your body, but you're still living. Now watch. He was there in Tartarus where the, uh, the, the poor man was in paradise with Abraham. Faithful, faithful. But just understand, 
Whatever form they had, it was not the physical body. So they were still alive. Watch how I'm going. And the rich man, we find out when he, he was still alive. He had nothing. He had nothing. All his riches was gone. He didn't serve God. He had nothing. He knew where he was. He felt the pain. He remembered. So we're still alive. Don't let anybody fool you think you're asleep. I don't know how long it takes, but soon if you pass away, if you're faithful, the angels come and they carry you into paradise. I don't know, I don't know how fast that happens. I don't think it happens in two days or I don't think it's a schedule. I, well, uh, he didn't pass away, so I think he's scheduled for next week. I appreciate you laughing. But that's that no, I think that happens. Boom. The faithful, they come and get you and take you to paradise. I want you to see you're still living. Still living. Now watch this. The Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. So that, that's a spirit. That's at the judgment day. That means we're going to receive a spiritual body. I'm still living. Moses and Elijah came before Jesus and they, at the transfiguration. They had died many, many moons ago. Abraham before Moses. Still living. So I want you to think about that. You're still living. So just like you're living right now in your flesh, when you leave here, you're still living. Notice the feeling if, you, if we don't obey God. You ever feel ashamed? You ever feel ashamed like, what was I thinking? What was I thinking? I can't believe I said that. Or I can't believe I did that. I mean, what, what was I thinking? And you, you just feel ashamed. Like Adam and Eve, they felt the shame. Like, what in the world? But notice this. Watch this. Chapter 2 and verse 28. Now, little children, abide in him so that when he appears, we may have confidence. Wait, this is judgment day. So if I have confidence, that's still me. I'm not asleep. If I have confidence, that means I was faithful. See, Paul said, I fought a good fight. I finished the race. I kept the faith. It's confidence. Now it was laid up for me a crown of righteousness. But not for me only, but for all those who love his appearing. That's confidence. See, he knew. For all those who love his appearing. He knew he was going to a better place. He said, I desire to be with Christ, but it's better for me to stay here. Confidence. Notice what I just said. He said, I fought a good fight. I finished the race. I kept the faith. That's the gospel. And now it's led us to be a crowd of righteousness. So he said, if you do the same thing, then we can approach God with confidence. See? Or, watch what he said. He's, he's just straight to the point. And not shrink away from him in shame at his coming. I'll read that again. Now, little children, abide in him so that when he appears, Christ, we may have confidence and not shrink away from him in shame at his coming. Not, it's like, you're ashamed. You're ashamed. But the sad thing about this shame is that you can't make it right. That's the sad thing about, when I was ashamed, like, man, what was I thinking? I can, it, it, I, if, I, if I'm ashamed of you, I react towards you. I can get with you and we can make it right. If I'm ashamed of something else I've done, I can get with the Lord and we can make it right. I can always, and I can move on and, 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 and do what I have to do so I can have confidence. See, that's when I repent. That's what, you know, repent and be baptized. It's like I'm, I'm changed on things that I'm ashamed of. I can't believe I was worshiping God this way. This is no scriptural authority for me to do this, and I'm ashamed of what I was doing. Then I can change that. Realize that this this time in the judgment day, man, some people will be ashamed because they'll be saying, "What was I doing? I didn't even pay anything for long. I was just baptized in the streets. I have to take the spiritual body and say, turn to me and repent." The shame because everything is exposed. See, and God put us the way He did it. And Isaiah was great. 
servant, this Christ would come. Isaiah chapter 42, he's the, he's the great servant. He's the gift of the servant. Great leader. He came to seek and save the lost. Not about himself. So we can be faithful. We can be ready. So I don't have to be ashamed. Listen, as we live today, as I said before, when a baby is born, that child is wrong. There's life, there's death. Death means separation. The no one never dies. The no one never dies. sin against God, which is an ancient cause, and some of it are now, because they'll take the judgment and send it to the damnation. They don't have a flesh, and we do. When this flesh goes, it's still here. Never, never dies. So people are deceiving themselves, not serving God, not doing things based on the authority. It doesn't even matter to some people. Not knowing the spirit returns to God who gave it. Now, when you go, when we go where we have confidence, I've done it. I've done it. All I have shame. That's up to me. We can have you please come and stand and sing a song for the invitation. Is I high rise?